Hey guys, welcome back to Made by Britzy. Um, I'm Brittany, and this is my podcast, uh, which is typically about knitting and sewing, but today's episode is a little different. Uh, today's just gonna be about sewing, um, because I don't have a ton of sewing, but I have more than I wanted to include in my regular podcast, and I wanted to be able to go over this dress in more detail. Um, so this dress is a dress that I've uh, seen a lot of people make, and I know uh, a lot of people were having issues with fit, so I just wanted to go over what I did and how I was able to get a fit that I'm happy with. Um, so without further ado, uh, this is the Patterns by Gertie. Um, it's a Butterick pattern and it's B6413. So this has been all over the place um, on Instagram uh, and it's, it's a beautiful dress. I love it. So uh, when I saw this, I knew I had to make one for myself. Um, now let me start by saying uh, I didn't do the version on here. I did uh, I did my own version with a, a full gathered skirt, which I've seen a lot of people do. So, um, and it turned out really cute. And I have a couple of straight dresses in, in my wardrobe and I wanted to do something a little different. Um, this was meant to be my Valentine's Day dress, but was not finished in time. Uh, but that's okay because this is something I'll get a lot of wear out of this summer. Uh, so let me just start off uh, with how I picked my size. Um, if you've if you've sewn any big four patterns before, uh, you know that they allow for quite a bit of ease. Um, I like a more fitted dress, and I think with this style, I mean, you're you're supposed to have um, you know a more fitted look. Uh, but for whatever reason, the big four, I, I guess. Obviously, everyone has different body shapes and sizes, and so I guess the um, large amount of ease kind of uh, allows some wiggle room, um, which I totally get. Uh, so just for example, if I were to pick the size that the pattern calls for, I would have to do um, a size 12 to fit my hip, and then an eight, uh, probably an eight to, to fit my waist and bust. Um, I kind of ignored the hip measurement on this one because I knew I was doing a fuller skirt, so it would not matter. So um, I went ahead, uh, I thought I had cut out a six, but after looking at it, um, I think I went ahead and cut out the eight. Um, so I had made a muslin, which I showed in, I think, episode two of my podcast. Um, I just made a muslin of the top, and I felt like I had a pretty good fit, but I think that was a little deceiving because I hadn't uh, put a closure in the back yet, so I was just kind of holding it together, and I, I felt like I, get, I got a good fit, but when I did the same uh, for this, after putting the skirt and everything, I realized it was way too big. Um, so these were, you know, kind of coming off of my shoulders. I felt like it looked like an 80s prom dress, like was not the look that I was going for. So uh, basically all I did was I, I made it true true to the size eight. Um, I didn't make any modifications. I probably should have done like a small bust adjustment, but um, I was just ready to get the dress done because I had cut it out for a bit and um, uh, yeah, I was just ready to finish it. So um, after basting in the zipper and I realized that um, I needed to take it in a, a couple of inches in the back, um, basically I had my husband um, pinch it at the top and take a measurement like uh, how much extra fabric I had. And then I also had him pinch it in at the waist and um, measure that amount of fabric there too. And uh, basically it was I want to say about an inch and a half on each side at the top that needed to come out and then an inch on each side at the waist, which to me is, is huge. So that's a lot to take out of a, of a dress after it's, it's already made. Um, and after it's made according to a size smaller than, uh, they recommended. <laughs> so anyway, I basically marked on each side of the zipper, uh, where the inch and a half mark was, um, and I marked uh, at the waist an inch in, and I took a, a ruler and made an angle, uh, drew, drew an angled line, you know, so basically it tapered in from the top to the waist. Um, and then I chopped that part off, and uh, then I uh, basted the zipper in, because I know I don't do an invisible zipper, so um, I, I knew the zipper would allow for a little extra room. Um, 
So I basted the zipper in, made sure the fit was okay, and uh, then went ahead and, and sewed the zipper in. And I am super happy with how it fits now. I, I can't believe like what a difference it made. Um, I went from being really not liking the dress and I was really disappointed in thinking that I wasn't gonna wear it. Um, and now I love it. So I'll stand up and give you a little closer look at the bodice. So it's got this uh, really cool keyhole cutout, um, which I know, I think that's the area that people are having issues with, um, because if it's too loose, you're, you're going to get uh, like some under boob showing there, which, uh, you know, most people aren't okay with. I guess it depends on what look you're going for. Um, I'm definitely not very busty, so uh, I didn't have that problem, um, but it, it was still loose before I made the adjustment. It was definitely loose here, and it, it just didn't look great. Uh, but yeah, now I, I love it. Um, I did find uh, the pattern has you like sewing two seams uh, along the middle here to gather it. And I felt like that was really hard to do. The fabric was is thick and it's, I mean, it's just quilting cotton. I feel like um, unless you're using a super thin fabric, it's going to be really hard to make a gather here. Um, so I, I did the best I could. I think it says it has you um, gathering it to two inches. Um, and I was not able to do that without breaking the thread. And um, so I gathered it the best I could and then just used this, uh, this little uh, bar to kind of pull the rest of it in. Uh, yeah, so I, I love this top. Um, and then as far as the skirt, uh, like I said, I didn't go with the straight skirt that the pattern calls for. Um, I've learned after making quite a few dresses, um, there's about three skirts that I tend to have uh, the fit and the pattern down. Um, I do a straight skirt that I just have a pattern that uh, I use all the time. I do um, like a full circle skirt or a half circle skirt sometimes. And then uh, this one is just a basic gathered skirt. Um, so what I did after I made the top, um, I took the fabric that I had left because uh, I wasn't sure also how long I wanted to be the skirt to be. So I took the fabric that I had left and um, I cut it in half. Uh, so I had a piece for the front and a piece for the back. I then took the back piece and cut that into two. Um, so you have, you know, the left side, right side, and you have the zipper in between. So um, basically I did uh, I gathered the front to, to equal half of my waist measurement plus you know seam allowance and then I did the same for the back two pieces um, and then sewed it together so super easy I'm sure you guys have probably made a gathered skirt before if you've if you've made a dress uh, and the reason I love gathered skirts I love probably love circle skirts the best but I hate hemming them uh, it's just the worst so um, I love gathered skirts because it's just straight on the bottom. I, um, another reason I wasn't super happy with this, it, before the skirt was, ended up being too long and it just looked kind of frumpy. So I cut off quite a bit and then I did a nice, uh, thick hem. So I folded under an inch and then folded under another inch. So it's nice and thick and kind of gives it some body at the bottom. So it makes the skirt stand out a little more. Um, whereas when it was longer, it was just kind of like, I kind of had a bell shape, like it was poofy up here and then kind of went in and I not a good look for me uh, so I'm super happy with how this turned out um, give you a shot of the back uh, I just think it's a super cute fun summery dress and now that I've kind of tweaked the pattern a little I'll definitely be making some more uh, if you have any questions about this I'm by no means an expert but um, if you have any questions uh, you know about what I did please feel free to message me and I'd be happy to help uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is something um, I actually posted pictures on Instagram and I did uh, did say that I would kind of go over the method I used to, to make this shirt. Um, so uh, I'll go into a little detail, but um, I don't know if, if you actually want a tutorial. I have thought about doing like a quick tutorial for this, basically I'm um, filming the method that I use, but I think there's plenty of um, tutorials already on YouTube uh, that I'm I think I found one on Pinterest that I use, but um, so this is just a baseball tee that I made for my husband. It looks huge right now, um, but he, I guess when I first really got into sewing, I wanted to make something for him. 
uh, and I asked him what he wanted and he set me on a mission to basically create the perfect t-shirt. So um, my first thought was to take a t-shirt that he already loved and to kind of trace it and um, just be able to, you know, then you have the option to make whatever colors you want. Um, I found a lot of great jersey fabric at the Fabric Place basement in uh, Natick, Massachusetts. Um, so I had a lot of different colors. Uh, so basically I took his favorite baseball t-shirt and um, I used it I, d I traced it and used it to make this shirt. Um, it was actually very, very easy. Um, I'm sure there's more complicated ways to do it, but this was my first time doing it and I just wanted something simple and quick. Um, so basically what I did, I took his shirt, laid it out uh, on a, a sheet of tracing paper and I traced, um, not including the sleeve because you know the baseball um, tee has it's like a, a raglan sleeve so um i basically just traced the front and i suggest just doing one side because then you can fold it over and mirror that that way they're exactly the same um because otherwise it, it's not going to be exactly perfect if you're if you're tracing both sides of the t-shirt so um i did that for the front uh and honestly i've I use the same pattern for the front and the back. If if there's a huge difference in the front and the back, um, I would suggest tracing a piece for the front and the back. But with this one, it, it was pretty much the same. Only the neckline was different, and I was able to compensate for that. You know, when when I drew out the pattern, uh, just by raising the neckline and the back. Um, so I did the same thing for the sleeve. I just kind of traced the sleeve. Um, yeah, and I made sure to add, for, for nets, I usually do three-eighths of an inch uh, seam allowance, so I made sure to add, uh, you know, three-eighths of an inch um, on each side for seam allowance, and um, yeah, I just, I was surprised at how well it came together. I kind of wasn't expecting it to work out, but it sewed up really quick, uh, and to be honest with you, he doesn't wear this because... Um, when I bought this fabric, I didn't realize that um, it's sparkly on the inside. <laughs> and I, it was folded in half, you know, and um, that this is meant to be the right side, but I didn't realize. Um, I just liked the color blue and I snatched it up. Uh, anyway, so I thought, you know, for a practice piece, it's fine, not a big deal. But honestly, you can't even see it when it's on. You can't tell, but he still won't wear it. And... Uh, that's fine because I've I've kind of stolen it from him. Um, it's super soft and comfy. I I really like it. So yeah, it's mine now. Um, it's definitely not perfect by any means. I did for the hem and the sleeves. Um, I just did a zigzag stitch uh, on my machine and um, yeah, it's definitely not great. Um, but this is when I had just kind of first started working with knits and I mean I still by no means have perfected uh, helming on knits. I usually end up with something that's wavy or if I try to serge it first it gets stretched out and ugh. So anyway um, yeah it's not perfect but I'm totally happy with it. Uh, for the neck band um, I just kind of experimented. I, I cut out you know a long strip and um, I think I had to try that a few times but I cut, cut out a long strip, folded it in half and um, kind of stretched it to as I was sewing to fit the neckline, which I, uh, you know, if, if you've ever sewn a neck, a neck band on any knits, you know, if it's, if it's too small, it's going to pull it in too much. And if it's too big, then uh, it's going to be floppy. So you kind of have to play around with it. Um, I think there's some general rule for, you know, uh, once you measure the neck band, um, there's some rule, you know, uh, that that you can kind of figure out how big or how long you need your little strip to be um, but yeah I just kind of played around with it and found something that worked um, yeah so if you have any questions about this also please feel free to message me um, again I am by no means an expert this is just something that worked for me and something I'm definitely going to do again um, 
And yeah, now I feel like I can create endless amounts of Dave's favorite t-shirt and hopefully some that he'll wear. Uh, I did get some non-sparkly fabric and colors that he likes. Um, so yeah, the I think uh, this will be like a good project for this summer. He, he has tons of t-shirts, but um, I'm sure you can always use more. So the next two things that I want to talk about um, aren't things that I've made yet, but they're things that uh, I want to sew in the future, um, probably soon. Uh, so these pants um, I got at Goodwill. Uh, these are, I saw these hanging up on the end, um, like of an aisle, and they're a boy's size 14. And to me, I thought they looked super small. It's like, there's no way these are going to fit me. But um, I love this mustard color and their corduroy. And I knew I can leave without trying them on and knowing for sure. Um, so I tried them on and it turns out they actually fit perfectly, which is kind of crazy. They're even the right length because I'm short and I never find pants that are short, uh, short enough for me. Um, so anyway, they fit perfectly. It's definitely not a flattering fit because they're like a straight leg, which my legs are this long. So that's not a good look for me. Um, so I went ahead and got them, but I knew I would make some type of modification to these. And I think what I've decided to do is here at the bottom, I'm going to somehow, I'm going to slit uh, probably the outside seam and I want to make some giant crazy like bell bottom pants out of these. So I'm going to slit that and then put some, uh, a panel of some sort, either, uh, like crochet, um, some type of crochet panel or I don't know some really cool fabric maybe some lace or velvet um I know on fabric.com I saw this really cool like burnout uh velvet print that I love actually they have a few that I love um but it's kind of pricey so I hadn't bought any but I might have to do that for these because it was just awesome uh yeah so just just a little sneak peek of what's to come um super excited about this mainly because I I love this color <laughs> I mean, who could pass up mustard corduroy pants? I mean, come on. At Goodwill, they were like five bucks. Uh, so I wasn't about to let these bad boys go. Um, yeah, so I'll keep you posted on, on that. It could go horribly wrong or they could turn out amazing. Uh, we'll have to find out. And so the last thing I have to show you is one I kind of briefly went over in my previous episode. Um, so I'm doing something called Dave's Picks where I let my husband go through my fabric stash and pick whatever he wants. And, uh, you know, I have to make my next project out of that. Um, so I expected, expected something way worse, but he actually picked something that I love anyway. I think this got buried in the bottom of my stash because um, I know I would have already used this. Uh, so this is actually fabric that I got at Walmart, just um, plain old quilting cotton. But when I first realized that Walmart sold fabric and that it was super cheap, um, I kind of went crazy and I bought a lot from them. And uh, yeah, like I said, I think this just got buried in the bottom of my stash. Um, but he picked this out, so I was kind of relieved that I wasn't going to have to make something horrible. Um, even though I think I like all the fabrics in my stash, to be honest with you. Just I was anticipating having to make something that I wasn't really in the mood to work with. But this is perfect. It'll be perfect for summer. Um, and I picked another Patterns by Gertie dress. Um, I'm going to do this straight skirt version. So... It actually calls for less than two yards of fabric. I have three yards here, so I'll have plenty. Um, yeah, so I don't know, not a whole lot to say about this dress because I haven't made it yet, but I think, uh, I know for sure I'm going to cut out the smallest size since I learned from working with the other patterns by Gertie uh, pattern. Um, so I'm gonna cut out the smallest size and um, Instead of using the, the skirt that comes with the pattern, I'm going to, I have a, my go-to straight skirt pattern um, that I'm going to use instead, just so, I don't know, I don't have to bother with cutting this out and making adjustments and whatnot. Um, yeah, but I'm super excited. I've actually never done spaghetti straps before, and it has like the sliders uh, so that they're adjustable. So I've never done that before, so I'm excited about that. Um, I love learning new skill. Uh, new skills and that's something um that i feel like would would be good to know how to, how to do um so yeah i'll probably get started on this tonight as far as um, i need to pre-wash the fabric but 
uh, I'm gonna cut out the pattern and hopefully um, get some pieces cut out and uh, have something to show you soon. Uh, yeah, so that's it for today. Just wanted to do a little quick episode um, about what I'm sewing. Uh, I love sewing podcasts just as much as I love knitting podcasts, and I love seeing fabric, and uh, I love seeing what other people are planning on sewing. It's just really inspiring. Um, I have a ton of patterns, as you can see. Most of those, or I'd say about 60% of those are vintage. Um, and I've been wanting to to make some more vintage clothes. Uh, lately, I've been using the patterns that are, you know, the new patterns that are vintage inspired um, because I, I kind of hate cutting into the vintage patterns. They they tend to be a little more um, frail than, uh, you know, the the paper's already thin and it can, you know, makes me nervous that that I'm gonna destroy them. Uh, so if I can find something similar that's a newer pattern and, and I don't have to mess up one of the vintage patterns, I can just use them, you know, for inspiration, um, then I, I like to do that. Uh, so anyway, I have a ton of patterns that I want to make. Um, I like sharing my plans with you guys. So uh, let me know if this is something you want more of in the future. Um, and I'll be happy to do it. Uh, so thanks again for watching. Um, and I'll see you soon. Bye.